so welcome everybody. Thanks for, for coming. I appreciate it. Um, I know everybody's got a lot of things that they could be doing on this Wednesday morning or afternoon or evening or depending where you are. So I appreciate it. So this presentation is all about finding misconfigured permissions that are often hidden or obscured. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, why that is and my kind of theory and ethos on that. But, uh, you know, the way I think about this is there's little to no warning in Active Directory, right? You, most of these issues that we'll talk about, you won't find uh, unless you go looking for them or uh, something happens. And that's kind of the, 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 the thesis of today's webinar. So real quick, type one in chat if you know what a DACL is. Uh, just to get a sense of everybody's kind of uh, experience level here. So some of these slides, uh, I've included kind of a 101 presentation section for this. Good, lots of ones. So we'll, we can breeze through that a little bit more uh, for those who are more familiar with this. So permissions, silent, like, silent but deadly, right? Uh, I tried to make a cheeky title for this and be kind of cute with it. But, uh, you know, from what I see, from the engagements that I do, permissions are silent but deadly unless there's an IT support issue, right? Something happens, something breaks, and you go looking, and you're like, oh, that thing is misconfigured, or that doesn't work. And uh, in other cases, you might have a pen test, right? Pen tester finds misconfigured permissions on a certificate template, hey, Jake, um, or a, a share, or something else, right? A pen tester finds something, hopefully it's a good guy and not a bad guy, or there's a security incident, right? Something happens and you have to research it, look into it, you find the root cause, and you're like, oh, yeah, actually domain users could add themselves to domain admins or something like that. So those are usually the three kind of scenarios that I often see that would make someone be able to, or allow someone to identify these misconfigured permissions. So real quick for everybody uh, who's joining, my name is Spencer Lussie. I'm a senior pen tester here at Secure IT 360. Uh, I've got a long background in help desk and systems administration uh, in Active Directory. And uh, I like to say that I'm a, a recovering sysadmin. Uh, some of you may have heard me say that, um, but uh, I spend a lot of my time now doing internal pen testing, assume breach. Uh, I spend a lot of time focusing on Active Directory security. That's kind of my happy place. Uh, I've got some uh, certifications to my name, a couple CVEs, and I'm most proud of the, the content and the tools uh, and the contributions to open source that I do and all those things. Uh, we have a podcast uh, and I really love sharing knowledge and experience and wisdom, uh, the wisdom that I do have with folks to help them better secure their environments. So uh, Active Directory permissions. Active Directory permissions uh, are a finicky beast. And for everybody who's dealt with this before, you kind of have a sense of why we need permissions, right? Security, compliance, uh, integrity, right? The CIA triad. If we don't have good permissions or, or if our permissions are lax, it might not only allow for inadvertently modifying the data, right? That we don't want to be modified, but it allows for unauthorized access. Uh, and then you get into the whole compliance and regulatory aspects of it and you can get big trouble uh, with you know not securing that data and then of course permissions are kind of the backbone of attack paths right when you look at something like bloodhound or you look at attack paths in active directory you know it's all it's all permission based it's identity based uh, so it's a the permissions are kind of the ground level um, needed for these attack paths yeah definitely will be recorded so permissions part one this is like a quick overview um, I intend this permission to be, you know, suitable for all audiences. So I include this. We'll just go through a couple important things. So secureable objects, right? Those are users, computers, groups, OUs, etc. cetera. Uh, those are the things in Active Directory that you can secure. The security principle is the, the user account, computer account, the object essentially that can be authentic, authenticated by the, system, the operating system. So a lot of times it's a user account. Um, these accounts have uh, have SIDs or security identifiers along with them, and we'll see some of that as we get into it. Permissions are just the rules, you know, the rules that govern the access. Delegated permissions is something we're going to focus on specifically and kind of more uh, intently in this webinar. Those are just permissions that are granted without having the user to be a member, without requiring their user be a member of a security group. 
So if you want to give users the ability to reset passwords, you can delegate that permission rather than have them in, you know, domain admins, for example. A couple other quick things, access control entry. So that's the specific access right uh, a security principal has on a, secu on a uh, secured object. object. The access control list is just a list that defines those protections. The DACL combines the, the users and the groups that are assigned those permissions with the access rights. And we're gonna show, I'm gonna show kind of a demonstration of this and kind of show some screenshots or just walk through this verbally. And then the SACL allows, um, or the SACL is for the security audit logging piece. So you can determine what access is logged. So a real quick high level overview. Uh, some of you might be already familiar with this and more uh, you know, of an expert in this than I. Access rights. So the other important thing to consider is all of these securable objects have certain access rights. So this will come up again, but there are, there are some examples on the screen. So generic all, it's like full control, right? User force change password that allows you the ability to, to change passwords, right? Right DACL, modify the, the object's DACL. Remember, we just learned about that. ACE types, we have generic, we have specific. So generic it affects all types of objects. Uh, and then specific are ACEs that apply to specific uh, properties on an object. Um, so we're going to look at that in, in more in an example here. So this is an example from this article by Daniel Ulrich, which is really good. Uh, it's a great overview um, of these permissions. So for anybody who wants a little bit more in depth or just wants to review it, that's a great blog post that I've linked in the slides here. Uh, but essentially you see the ACLs, the ACLs up on the top and the ACE, uh, which are the individual permissions there. And we'll look at that in more depth as well as we get into a more detailed demo. Uh, and there's a couple parts to the ACE. And when you click advanced, you actually get to see those ACEs in a more um, fine grained way. And you can see inheritance and all that. So finally, I'm gonna show a, a video demo. Hopefully we can see this. And when I play this, yeah, it's working. Okay, cool. So if you just like right clicking on, on an object, you can go to the security tab and that's where your DACL is going to be, your, your ACLs. And you can see, you know, user one has certain privileges there and you can kind of click through. Okay, text a little fuzzy, hold on. Yeah, I can't make it any better, bigger right now. It'll be better in the recording. Um, Gotcha. Thanks, Roger. Uh, so you can click through and you can click through these user objects and uh, essentially look at the, the different permissions, right? The different ACLs, the DACLs. You click advanced to get into this section. And once we get through this, uh, I'll bring up my VM and I should be able to, to kind of showcase this a little bit better. But here's the individual ACEs, right? The, the individual access control entries that, that govern the, the specific permissions uh, for the object and um, the principles. So you can see I'm just clicking through here and showing kind of different things. I realize it's fuzzy right now. Um, when I get into the lab, um, I will show a little bit this uh, again so you guys can see it, but fairly straightforward. I think everybody's kind of come in here and seen this uh, and kind of knows what that looks like. So there are a couple things that I'll showcase once I get into the lab, but essentially you can click on the effective access tab and select the user and look at their effective permissions. So that'll show you all the permissions that they have. It'll show you where they have permissions, whether it's on the object itself or the object and all the child objects, things like that. So I'll show this again. Uh, I'll share my screen and, and I'll show this again. So the active directory permission challenge. So we have to know where to look. We have to know, you know, where are these misconfigured permissions likely to occur? Uh, where are they occurring? And we have to know what to look for, right? We have to know what permissions are bad. We have to know what users shouldn't have those permissions. So there's a couple ingredients we need to know in, in order to, to be able to identify these. And that's why I call it, you know, the stinky truth or the silent but deadly. Uh, you know, no environment is, um, you know, uh, is ever perfect. 
and we are undoubtedly going to have these misconfigured permissions. And it's important to know one, where to look and two, what to look for. So that's what we're going to spend the rest of our time on. So uh, part of that, part of that reason and part of the trouble is, and many of you know this, it's nothing new, but Active Directory is designed for administration, not necessarily security. You know, it, it, you know, there's not a lot of warnings. You know, there are some when it comes to certificate templates or some other things, but there's really not a lot of warnings. You can just add domain users to the domain admins group. No problem. Um, you can delegate permissions. No problem. There's really not a lot uh, in the way preventing you from doing that or just warning you that that's happening, right? It assumes you know what you're doing. And if you're like me, um, you hardly know what you're doing on a good day. Um, so it's hard, right? It's hard to manage these permissions. It's hard to configure things properly. Things get misclicked. Um, we misinterpret things. We misunderstand how things work. Um, it's a beast, right? Active Directory is a beast, which is why we see these issues so commonly. Uh, so we've got to know where to look. So security groups, OUs, file shares, group policies, essentially everything, right? Everything in Active Directory, for more or less, is an object, and it has uh, securable. It's a securable object, has print security principles, has ACLs, pretty much everything, right? So permissions can go wrong virtually almost everywhere. Um, so we're going to talk about a specific use case to what to look for, and hopefully you can take this back and use this tangibly in your environments and go look for these things. You know, today if you wanted to. But we're going to look at some of these, but here's some of the things to look for, right? And those are some of the more high value things uh, to look for. So use case number one is where a low privilege security principle or what's sometimes referred to as an unsafe user that has unsafe permissions. And we're going to talk about those two things a little bit more on high privilege securable objects or resources. So again, low privilege user or principle with privileges on a high privileged resource. So for example, domain users with full control on the account operator security group. Account operators is a built-in group, uh, has you know some elevated permissions in the domain to manage all the accounts, except for domain admins. Uh, so that could be pretty bad, right? If we have that in our, our environment. So this is gonna be the first use case that we look for. Uh, and kind of the focus of the rest of the, the webinar to kind of walk through what this looks like, what to, what to identify, how to identify it, what tools you can use to identify it with. Uh, the second use case is uh, where administrative principles, but not full administrative principles, right? Uh, that have unsafe permissions on high privilege resources. So this is like a help desk group or uh, a network team or something like that where they have some administrative rights Maybe they have some permissions to administer OUs or groups and things like that, but you don't want them to have full-blown domain level or domain admin access, for example. Uh, so that is a second kind of use case. It's similar to number one, uh, virtually the same as number one, just different access levels. Um, and we're gonna look at these in a couple different ways. We're gonna look at it from the perspective of the unsafe user accessing a privileged resource and we're going to look at it in reverse to kind of show how you can identify this in multiple different ways so unsafe users those are just it's just a broad group of users that generally don't have administrative access right they're standard users they're Susie and accounting hr team etc those are groups like domain users authenticated users everyone or you know in your environment you might have you know like uh, a bucket of users for the accounting group or for HR or whatever. So these are unsafe users, users who typically don't have admin rights on servers, typically don't have local admin rights. They typically don't have any server admin access. So they're just not just standard users, right? And this is these are not exhaustive lists by any means. So unsafe permissions. Unsafe permissions are things we discussed a little bit earlier, which is like full control. Full control is you can just do whatever you want. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the actual ace is generic all. Then there's write and modify. So uh, if I can modify files in a share or if I can modify the permissions on an object, uh, that could be bad as well. So we, there's write and modify in play here from an unsafe permission standpoint. There's user force change password, right? If I can change the password for an admin account, 
as a standard user, that could also be bad. So that's something also to kind of look for from an unsafe permission standpoint. If I'm an owner of an object, that means I can inherently just modify uh, things with on that object. So I can modify permissions or properties uh, because in Active Directory, if you're the owner, uh, you own it, right? You have a certain amount of control over that object. And then there's things like creating objects, deleting objects. Uh, obviously, you might not uh, think of that necessarily as being an attack path, right? But if I can create a child object in the domain controllers OU, or if I can delete something that's, you know, important data or backups, right? That could be, you know, pretty, pretty dangerous. There, the last one uh, are DC sync pr uh, permissions. So replicate directory changes, replicate directory changes all. If you can DC, DC sync, you can capture hashes, um, potentially crack them or use them in, you know, to further your attack. So those are examples of unsafe permissions. So we're gonna look for unsafe users and unsafe permissions. So when we get to kind of the demonstration lab slash component, uh, we will look at that. So again, where to start? Uh, use case number one, right? like I said, we're gonna look at low privileged securable objects. So we're gonna first start there. We're gonna say our kind of our theory, right? Our hypothesis or whatever is like, we have on this group has unsafe permission somewhere. Let's find where that is. Um, so these are not, like I said, non-administrative groups, users, computers, et cetera. Domain users, everyone, et cetera. So the first use case and kind of the first demo um, we're gonna look, look at is where low privilege users or resources, or sorry, low privilege securable objects or resources have permissions over high privilege resources. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna go into the, the reverse. Uh, so we're going to show how to identify it from that low privilege user aspect first out to, you know, outbound to a high privilege resource. And then we're going to look at it in the reverse from, you know, the concept of domain admins or tier zero. So we're going to look at it inbound to those groups. So we're going to look at it a couple different ways. I'm kind of going to try and showcase how you can kind of find these a couple different ways. Uh, but that's what we're going to show in kind of like the next step here in the demo portion. Um, so, all right, so the demo environment that I have, it's just my lab environment. It's already badly misconfigured and botched and ruined and destroyed. Uh, we're going to look at a couple different misconfigurations. And like I said, we're going to look at it a couple different ways. Uh, and then at, after that, I'm going to show a tool that I really love, um, to, to help identify this even easier. Um, so again, this is really uh, blurry. So what I'm gonna do is just give me a second to pull up my lab. And I'm gonna pause, yeah, I should be able to pull this up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, let me pause this, give me one second. And I'm going to share my screen. Share. Okay. I think I got it. All right, cool. Meme game on point. Thanks, Brian. Um, everybody can still see my camera, or sorry, my desktop, right? You can see this. Okay, let me bring up, where is, where are you, Zoom? Um, Zoom went away for me, but uh, I think, so you guys can see the desktop, you can see these folders. Um, so we're going to open up Active Directory. Cool. Awesome. If you can't say anything or anything, just holler at me. I got chat, chat open. So in here, and I can't make this any bigger, I don't think, without screwing stuff up. Uh, so here's what I was talking about. You go to properties, right? Like you right click on an object and you click properties and you go to security and in security, you know, there's a list of users and groups that have access to certain things. Um, this is where you would see the ACLs, right? 
uh, and these are the, the actual permissions, right? If you click advanced, then you can get into the ACEs, right? So the ACE is a specific access control entry for a specific principle on, on this object, right? So it specifies specific permissions. Uh, you can see inheritance here, which is great. So if you're triaging a pen test report and you're like, oh, this has a misconfigured permission, it might be inherited, right? So uh, that is something to check. The auditing tab is where you can configure uh, auditing on those, those ACEs or those access rights. And then again, effective access is a great helpful tool to be able to look for a user, pull it up and say, what are all of the actual permissions for this user object? So we can see this user one has read all properties, write all properties, modify permissions, that could be pretty bad. That, that looks kind of dangerous. This user one, you know, looks kind of suspicious. So going into uh, what we're going to try to find, right? So with Active Directory, you might have a lot of things on the left, right? On, on your, on your, uh, in your OUs, in your security groups, you might have a huge environment, right? And it can be kind of hard to find where those users are, right? I can go to users and I can look at the users I have, or I could go to, you know, the domain users. Um, but there's not a good way to like find all these permissions, right? I have to like right click on all of these, these OUs, these security groups. I have to scroll through here. I have to look, um, it can be kind of different, difficult, right? Oh, look, we accidentally found one. Uh, so it's pretty difficult. And especially if you have a very large environment with 40,000 users, you know, hundreds of OUs, hundreds of security groups, different levels of admin access, it can be pretty difficult. Um, so uh, what I have kind of discovered through pen testing is a tool called a deleg. And a deleg, let me uh, go back to the slides. Well, I'll just show you guys. Uh, in the lab. So a deleg is a great tool. And actually, you know what? Um, can I do this? Okay. So a deleg, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, a deleg is a tool uh, that can find these misconfigured permissions. So it's just like a ACL analysis tool. Um, it was writ written by somebody named Matthew Buffett. Matthew. Uh, and yeah, so it's Matthew I Buffett. So uh, this was uh, a program, and I'll pull it up here in a second, but it was a program written in Rust um, that essentially goes out to all of your objects in Active Directory, pulls the ACLs, and displays them in kind of a nice... Uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were commenting on uh, the way I was saying his name. I was very self-conscious with that. Uh, so the tool is called a deleg, uh, and it's a free tool. Um, and the link to the GitHub will be in in the slides. Uh, but it's a great tool for finding these misconfigured permissions. Uh, so it's going to look at all of the permissions in Active Directory and try to identify all those permissions, the delegated permissions and uh, present it in kind of a nice uh, display. So I'll pull that up in a second. Thank you for the link, Jake. So I'll pull that up in a second. Um, I created a companion tool called a Delegator, uh, which is essentially just a wrapper around a Deleg. And what that does is it runs a Deleg, it creates in a report, and then it does some PowerShell foo to, uh, to analyze the CSV report that it creates to look for unsafe permissions and unsafe users and kind of where those issues uh, uh, have maybe occurred. Sweet, thank you for the links, Jake, I appreciate it. Um, awesome, so I do have a, I am gonna pull up a delegator and a deleg. So give me one second to pull that up. I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. Do, 
All right. Okay, I'm gonna reshare. All right, everybody can see that again, right? Cool, we can see my screen. So when you click on a Deleg, it uh, brings up this dialog box. You can, if you're on a domain join system, uh, you can just hit connect. And then it's gonna bring up this nice window uh, and it's gonna have some stuff on the side. It's gonna show you some, uh, the kind of the same, it kind of resembles AD users and computers or ADUC. So it's kind of nice. So you can see your tree here and you can click on stuff. On the right, it shows you the ACE type, the trustee, and then the details, right? So like what the permissions are. So use case number one, right? We're talking about where low privilege trust or use, low privilege trustees uh, have access over high privilege trustees or resources. So in a deleg, in a deleg, if you click on view, and then you do index view by trustees, this is where I like to start um, because it's kind of left to right. Uh, and I read left to right. I think many of you probably do. Uh, I think left to right in terms of, you know, uh, doing things so it just makes sense to me naturally. The other reason I like this is because it focuses on those low privileged, uh, unsafe users and unsafe groups first. So again, view, index view by trustees. And then what you do is you just go to the global section, you open that up and you look at these groups, right? So like everyone, everyone uh, has uh, access here. So this resource, right? Eureka local, eureka.local is my lab. That's my domain. That's the root of the domain, if you remember. So the root right here, all the way at the root. What this is saying is that the everyone trustee has write all properties on the root. So that obviously is pretty dangerous. And we found that with a simple click. Obviously we could, you know, this one was easy, right? We could just go here, go to properties and you know, we could, we could see this, um, potentially, you know, you'd have to go into the advanced tab, click on everyone and you have to scroll down and find that permission or that ACE with a deleg, you just click on this and shows, you know, what the permissions are. So super cool. Uh, likewise with, you know, authenticated users. So this gives us a little bit more. Um, so as we look through here, we can see, you know, what might be interesting here. What's cool is it, it shows you permissions that might be misconfigured on certificate templates. So this could be another way, complementary way of, way of identifying misconfigured certificate templates, which is cool. So you can see, uh, I've got some certificate templates here, like this one, super secure certificate template. It's saying I have write all properties on this template, right? That could be bad because if I can modify all of the properties of the template, I might be able to intentionally misconfigure it, even if it's not misconfigured. Um, so you can see there's a number of different properties here, a number of different permissions uh, that you can kind of look at. Again, the computers OU, write all properties there. Something you might not expect. So really neat way, easy way to identify these, these permissions. And then, so like I said, that's one way to do it. One, it's one way is look at these low privilege groups. You know, you can even go to, you know, like uh, specific users, so specific OUs. You could look at domain users, for example. So a really nice way to, to kind of find this is look first at the trustee or trustee to resource. So sort by or indexed by the trustees. And then look at all these low privileged groups, users, unsafe users, if you will. And then look at what their permissions are. The other way to do this is to start backwards. So you start from the highest privileged resources. So if you just go and you index view by resources and you change that, you can see, you know, you've got a couple different things here. If you open your tree, you can kind of drill down into here. Uh, I'll click on domain controllers. Uh, so that was one of my examples. And we can see 
test 333, this funny test account, is the trustee. So now we're going right to left. This test account has write all properties on the, the domain controllers OU. So this is a good way to start with like your tier zero or your highest privilege resources and see what trustees might have access. So again, if we click on the root, we again see the ever one. We can see a couple of other things and then we can see everything else that, that might be applied here. Um, so again, you can click on computers, you can click on the different resources that you might care about that, that might have those misconfigured permissions and you can quickly identify those things. Um, is a Dell recognized by Microsoft Defender? No, this is not malicious in any way. Uh, it's not flagged. Um, it's written in Rust. If anybody has any Rust programming background, I would love to collaborate uh, to improve this. I got some ideas. Uh, I tried opening the Rust code in Visual Studio and I got a headache. So uh, I don't know Rust. It's a, it's a painful language, it looks like. But uh, no, it's not, not de detected by Defender or anything. Uh, as far as the inherited aces go, Jake, I'm not exactly sure. I've never, I didn't check. Um, I'd be curious to know. Uh, it's something I'll go back and check to see. Um, you can see deny aces in here. Um, and there is some additional things that you can enable in a deleg. So you can view like the built-in delegations. By default, it doesn't show the built-in delegations. Um, so there's a couple of other like options that you can enable here to kind of look at things a little bit differently. Um, so that's the ADELEG tool. Is there anything built in that you would always turn off? Um, Jake would probably be a good person to ask that. <laughs> um, Jake Hildreth, uh, who, um, is uh, works at Trimark and, and does these security assessments for AD all the time um, and has much more intimate knowledge than me. But as far as default goes, the built-in groups are something to kind of pay close attention to and avoid, not necessarily to disable or turn off or anything like that. Uh, but generally you don't want any users in those built-in groups um, outside of like the administrator group. Um, I've seen a number of times during pen tests where Domain users was a member of account operators. I've seen where domain users uh, were a member of um, the built-in administrators group inadvertently or the remote desktop users group. So all those built-in groups are pretty you know, dangerous and risky and you don't really need accounts in there. So it would be one thing to look at from you know just a default, just making sure there's no users there. Um, so that's a deleg. Uh, Adelig is super cool. Like I said, it's a free tool. It's easy to run. You download it, click it, and it runs. The next thing is a delegator. So I created a delegator to essentially analyze this, the output of this for you, and it has some built-in detections for it already. Uh, so what a delegator is going to do is, if I open up, And this is my development uh, script or branch, but essentially it's going to look for those same user groups, right? So, and you guys can see this Visual Studio code still, right? Just confirming. Hopefully everybody can still see that, I think. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so domain users, authenticated users, everyone. So this script is going to essentially look for those scenarios that I just talked about where unsafe trustees have privileges over unsafe or privileged resources. And then it's gonna look for the opposite, where there are any tier zero resources that might have permissions granted to unsafe users or trustees. So when you run this, uh, this go, go, a delegator script, uh, it will output a CSV file and it'll more or less tell you if it finds something yeah, that's right, you need good ASCII art. Uh, so this will output two CSV files. Uh, one is going to be a report showing the insecure trustees or resources, 
And then the other is just gonna be an output of all of the resources. So um, if we open up this report. Now I don't have uh, Excel installed uh, on my uh, lab machine, but you can see this is formatted in a nice Excel. So you could take this out and you know filter it and do whatever you want. But essentially this shows some of the things that we saw already. So um, the trustee and then the trustee type and then the resource. So um, the resource for, let's see if I can find everyone here. So here's everyone down here. It's showing, can I zoom that in? There we go. So the trustee, everyone has write all properties on the domain root. So again, a delegator goes out and it finds these and just puts them in a CSV file for you so that you can kind of later analyze them. So pretty nifty uh, from that perspective. And yeah. Oh, not digitally signed, rats. I can help you with that. Um, yeah, so that's a deleg and a delegator. Um, super cool tools. Like I said, a deleg was written by Matthew Buffett. Uh, it's a totally awesome free tool. I highly recommend checking it out. A delegator um, is a tool that I wrote. It's just the wrapper that uh, kind of runs the a deleg report and creates a CSV file. Um, yeah, that's an inspector gadget. All right, so I'm gonna pause the share and I'm gonna bring up the presentation again. So just give me one moment. Share screen. Okay, so there's a number of other tools I wanna shout out that can find some of these permissions. Obviously each of the tools has their strengths and weaknesses. Some find things, some find you know other things. A lot. There's a lot of overlap between these tools, but Pink Castle, one of my favorites. Purple Knight is a great one as well. Script Sentry, which I wrote as well, can find dangerous and misconfigured logon scripts. And Locksmith. Uh, Locksmith is an awesome tool for finding misconfigured, finding and fixing misconfigured Active Directory certificate issues. Uh, written by Jake, none other than Jake Hildreth himself, who's an awesome, awesome dude. And I help contribute a little bit there. And I'm an emotional support coder with the Locksmith project. Um, so those are some awesome tools that you can also use to find these, you know, these sneaky permissions. Can I advance the slide? Okay. We already, we already got to the demo, but I have to show the meme anyways. All right. Um, good. So as far as remediation advice goes, um, First of all, documentation is super important, right? Document, document, document. Uh, make sure that you have a, a clearly um, defined strategy for, for documenting uh, everything in your environment, right? Documentation can't be understated, uh, but essentially what you want to do uh, is, is make sure that at least the highest privileged resources and kind of your tier zero are documented and kind of start there document who has access, what the access is for, and that kind of thing. So documentation is super important. Communication amongst the teams, especially for large teams or big environments, you wanna make sure you're communicating changes, make sure you have uh, clear lines of communication on what's going to be changed and what to expect and how to identify any issues, how to communicate if there are issues identified. The third kind of piece of advice is uh, related to challenging what you think is how something is supposed to be or how something is supposed to be set up. Um, many times in Active Directory, it can be hard. Like, is that permission supposed to be there? Um, is that default and built in? Not really sure. So just kind of challenging assumptions and kind of you know challenging preconceived notions around permissions that should be there or shouldn't be uh, will maybe help you identify these things. And then test and learn, right? Um, if you are fortunate enough to have a lab or to have a sandbox environment or something like that, 
uh, I definitely encourage you to take advantage of, of trying things out and, you know, testing changes there and more or less just playing around and kind of discovering and learning in that environment. You can change things, you know, mess things up, brick your lab, uh, and it's all well and good in the, you know, in the uh, journey of learning. And then finally have a rollback plan. Um, I think that goes without saying, but documenting a plan, you know, what you're gonna change as far as the permissions go and how to revert those changes should something go wrong. So that's my kind of four bullet advice there. Uh, I do, uh, in closing, I do have resources in, this, in the slides. Um, so when I release the video in the slides, feel free to grab these and, and take a look at these. Um, and these are all really good resources for information for you guys. Um, and with that, uh, I'm done. I'm done like 10 minutes earlier than I wanted to be. It's kind of a speed run. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, thank you for sticking with me with the, some of the technical things and sharing the screen and whatnot. I super appreciate you guys being here. Um, and uh, I really hope you got value from this and I will open up for questions.